Hello everyone, today we are on Iceland in Reykjavik and we will speak to uh, Mrs. Sola, yes. who is the representative of the Stratio Transportation Company, which is serving the transport, bus transport to all the capital area, which means the Reykjavik and other city cities which is close to Reykjavik. Hello, Sala. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, the first question is about uh, the history of this transportation. Could you please share with us the history of public transportation in Reykjavik and the metropolitan area? Uh, when did the first bus comes uh, start operating on the streets of Reykjavik, and how has public transportation evolved since? Yes. Well, I only started 2019, so I know it's been for a long time. Like my mom used to grow up in Reykjavik with bus services, so it's somewhere in the 1900s that it started. I'm not sure exactly the year, but then it was, was called Stradsana Reykjavik. Then all the municipalities used to have their own bus company. But in the early 2000s, all the municipalities came together and formed one company called Straito, and that's the operation that I'm working for. And they planned the whole capital area. Before, you would have to take one bus from Hapnafirde, then change to go to Reykjavik, so it was more complicated. But now it's more uh, like looking at the whole area as a whole with Straito. So it's been quite a few years, and it's been evolving all through the time and history, but the case now is like the municipalities are all in it together, and uh, yeah, yeah, so that's how it's is. Who is exactly the owner of the straight the company? All the municipalities, like Reykjavik, Kópavogur, Hafnafjörður, Gavarbær, Mosusbær or Seldhnes. But of course Reykjavik is the biggest owner because that's the biggest city, so they all own it together. And uh, the people who run, like, uh, the, we have a board for Straito, and in the board there's always one representative from each municipality, usually a politician, so uh, elected a politician. So usually it's a political board that uh, kind of controls what we do. Yes. And how many passengers uh, does the company currently serve, and is the number of passengers increasing right now? Uh, like in 2018-19 it was about 12 million ish per year, uh, 12 million boardings, a little bit more than that per year, but of course it went down during COVID. Uh, we're hoping we will maybe get more numbers this year because uh, both January and February were record months since we started accounting passengers. So I don't know what the number will be this year, but hopefully we'll get a record year. I'm hoping for that. I could be great, yeah. great, it's great. Uh, and uh, tell me, what are the transportation preferences of uh, residents in, in the capital area? How do they typically commute to school or work? And, very important thing, how did you come here to this uh, interview? Uh, yes, uh, of course most people travel by car, the kind of mixture of American cities and European, European cities. The planning in the city has been really car-oriented uh, for the, like, since ever, almost. Hopefully that's changing with the new big projects. Uh, how did I come to this interview? Uh, yes, I uh, contacted Straito, I think, and asked for someone who could talk about public transport and maybe yeah. how are you? Did so you like? come here by bus or yeah. by car? Yeah, I took the bus. Oh, okay, I, yeah, yes. I, I'm, <laughs> I, really, I live really close to line number one, so that's my favorite line, so I usually take that. I don't want to park in the city, it's easier to take the bus and Listen to airports or something. <laughs> so right now it's easier to take a bus than, than park the car. Yeah. Mm, it's probably not easier, but I like to travel like with variety, sometimes car, sometimes bus, sometimes bike, sometimes walk. I think that's the best thing for each city. If people travel in a like different kind of modes. And usually when I go downtown I try to take the bus. Because I think it's easier than I don't have to park and maybe you're going everywhere around and I can just take the bus wherever the yes. bus stop is close to me. You have so. your own car, but you want, yeah. want to take the bus. Yeah, yeah but I'm really strong good. on having one car in my house. Like m many people have two cars, but we re I really want to have one car. And I also have an electrical bike, so I try to like differentiate how, how I get around. 
Yeah, it's right. Uh, how does the transportation system adapt to the changing seasons? Uh, considering the vari variations between summer and winter conditions, because they are, uh, there are you, you have strong winters here, you know. How how did you adapt to it? Is is, is there uh, difficult for for the sy bus system to adapt to this uh, to this changing of seasons? Mm, like it used to, in, before my time, we used to have different schedules for summer and winter. But summer schedules used to have less frequent service. But uh, we wanted to keep it the same because people still need to go to work, even if some people are on summer holidays, etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, now it's almost the same, summer and winter schedule. So it's not a big yeah. difference. But I have yeah. to admit, in the summer, the bus is more on time. Yeah, but, but uh, I was uh, asking how, you, uh, how it adapts, to, for example, to big snow uh, and, and, and the froze, is it the... Uh, problem for, for the bus company? Sometimes, but usually the streets that the bus drives is a priority for uh, taking the snow out of the road. Uh, I don't know, they used to, uh, yeah, just like taking the snow. So usually they start with the street where the bus goes. So usually it's not a problem, but of course we have our days where everything is a mess and buses are late. But uh, we hope it doesn't happen too often. But of course in the worst weather, like everyone has a problem, the bus also has a problem too. And are there the future plans to make changes to improvement the recovery transportation systems? The RTC is I'm asking about this new system. Yeah, yeah. There's a big plan. Like the government has decided to make a big infrastructure project for BRT line, and uh, like alongside that project, we have tried to have uh, planned just a complete shift on the system like both there will be more routes with more frequent service and they will be less affected by traffic because they will be driving in an infrastructure part of the route uh, we would call it brt route if the bus drives at least 50 percent ish in infrastructure because we don't want to force transfers on the end of the infrastructure so we will try to finish the route so people don't have to transfer as much and of course, it changes the dynamic of the system completely when we have this infrastructure. So we have to change also other common routes. So this, this has been a big project since I began at Stratol in 2019. We rescheduled the whole system and we are planning for more frequent trips as well. And hopefully like longer service hours. And so there will be more trips for people to be able to, and you will be less affected by traffic uh, for the routes that drive through the infrastructure. So right now there is planning. We are in the uh, st state of planning this system. Yeah, like we all. When, it, when, when will, it, will it start? When will uh, it start? They, like, of course, with construction, the timeline always changes, but they say in 2027. So mm -hmm. the construction for a bridge will start, I think, next year over Fosfor. And then, of course, when that bridge is finished, we will uh, try to have a bus route already there. Since the bridge will be finished, we will try to implement a route there to be able to use the bridge. And the bridge is only for pedestrians and uh, public transport and uh, like emergency cars for the hospital, etc. Okay, and this bridge will, will come, what will it uh, connect, this bridge? What, what it will it connect? It's gonna connect uh, Kopovor, which is another city close to Reykjavik, and uh, Reykjavik, like university area, because the University of Reykjavik is, in my opinion, really badly positioned for planning public transport because it's yeah. next to the sea, so you have to enter out there. And it's, it, at least, when we were planning in, in the f before, there was nothing else around the University of Reykjavik, so we could only have maybe one route close to the University yes. of Reykjavik because each route is very expensive. But with this, when you can drive through it, you can have more routes that go through it and shorter distance to downtown Reykjavik and more routes that go to University of Reykjavik and also University of Iceland and the National Hospital also. So I think it will make a great difference. It, completely changed how we had to th think about the whole system. So the, uh, the um, so this uh, infrastructure for 
public transportation goes fast. It's more important, so the bridge will be for public transportation. Yeah. So as the public transportation will go uh, faster than the cars. Yeah, because the cars have to drive Mecklenburg, another route. It's going to be heavy traffic there, and people can just go breeze through the sea and look at the beautiful view, and, yes. oh, <laughs> and don't have to think beautiful. about don't have to think about the traffic because you get get through and you're not stuck in traffic at least in the mornings. It's a very good idea. Yeah. Uh, d did you consider uh, inter uh, making some other ways of transportation, as a trolley buses or trams, in the system? Of course. Uh, when they were deciding on doing the BRT, there was a big discussion if they should do train or trolleys or, you know, light rail or something like that. But uh, because of the population of Iceland and how uh, spread around we live, how sparsely we live, uh, it was not considered ideal. It was too expensive for how many people we are. But maybe in the future, could be that the BRT, because we will have space, could be changed into light rail. Maybe not in my lifetime, but maybe my grandkids' lifetime or something like that. Could, could happen. I, know. I hope so. I really want to have light rail in Iceland. And did you consider some uh, kind of uh, other kinds of transportation, for example, the uh, public bikes, which can uh, help uh, to uh, serve the, uh, the, the areas uh, where there are uh, low density? not big density of, of people living. Yeah, look, of course it's a political decision and uh, here in Iceland it has been kind of for private companies like scooters. We used to have a private company that had bikes. So I think uh, at least how the political situation is now, it will probably be for private sector, people who want to go into that kind of business. But, you know, you never know with change politicians if they want to implement that also onto the bus. I just recently went to Stavanger and in Stavanger they do the bikes and it's an electrical bike so people can get way further. I think it's a great option because bus service is super expensive especially for the outskirts of the city and this could be a be a great option for first mile last mile option but as of today it's it's uh, up to uh, private companies if they want to do this kind of uh, company. Yes. And the last question, in your opinion, what role does public transportation can play to reduce the traffic congestion and, uh, in Reykjavik? Uh, how, what, is your plans to, what is the plans about uh, how many people uh, could uh, use only public transportation mm -hmm. and how many people will stay with their cars? Mm -hmm. And how do you think, uh, what goals you, can, you could achieve here in Reykjavik? Yeah, we have the, like the big regional plan for the capital area. I think the, the goal there is 12% taking the bus. Uh, it's pretty ambitious for Iceland, at least because we have the culture of the, the private car. But it would be awesome to do that. And one of the, the things to achieve that goal is to do the BRT, have more frequent trips, etc. But I think to be able to reach that goal, we have to do more. I think we would have to have higher parking fees uh, and also maybe tolls to get to the city if if that's the goal to get 12 percent to take the bus i think uh, it's not enough just to increase the service and have longer service hours i think the government needs to be do more to be able to achieve that goal thank you very much yeah. for the very interesting interview yeah <laughs> thank you yes uh, maybe you can uh, have uh, some questions uh, to to ask. Well, when you you could uh, ask about uh, our city, our our, our uh, yeah. Like, w what's the name of the city that you're from? Wuj. Wuj. And, and how the, many? The difficult of, of Polish language. <laughs> if uh, you spell it uh, L L O D Z uh, and, oh. uh, and Polish some Polish signs uh, in it, uh, so it is Wuj. Uh, it is a city in uh, central Poland, uh, close to Warsaw, uh, and uh, it was uh, built uh, mostly in 19th century. Uh, in the, in the, it, was, uh, it has uh, 600 years uh, of history, but it was a very, very small town. Then in 96th, 19th century, the growth uh, explodes. So we got uh, the very big uh, amount of uh, 
the uh, urban structure for the 19th century. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, and it is uh, very difficult to serve this structure by cars, mm -hmm. and, but it is easy to serve this structure by public transportations, for example, trams, uh, bikes, and etc. Uh, but uh, it is uh, difficult for for our uh, our uh, authorities to understand this this uh, these things. Yeah, so yeah. right now we are uh, we have uh, car oriented policy, which that is uh, which uh, but but uh, uh, the authorities says that there is a public transportation oriented policy because they are renovated the tram lines renovated the systems, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the renovations are going so slow that they are making them things worse. So yeah. this is a very so complicated situation, you know, yeah. that people say we are getting, uh, 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 authorities say we are getting better and better in it. We spend more and more money on public transportation, mm -hmm. but the problems are big because Sometimes they uh, they make uh, that new tram lines and they get the money for tram lines and but uh, in the same project there is the tunnel for cars. Yeah, yeah. You will have so the same. So the most money goes for the tunnel for the cars. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of money goes for the tram lines yeah. itself. And then when we will stop uh, uh, we stop making this uh, this big project, it was the it was the project uh, uh, which is uh, uh, this is what was finished uh, the the project with the tunnel. Mm -hmm. You know when when it stops, uh, they say we don't have uh, money enough money. In the, mm -hmm. so, so if you say uh, that should that they should repair for example the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. They say well, we don't have uh, money. We spend it for a big project for trams, mm -hmm. but they didn't did not need to do uh, this uh, tunnel. Uh, if if the money from tunnel would be spent uh, in all the city for for mm -hmm. making better the system, yeah. it would be better for yeah. people for the I city. <laughs> so this, this this is the same. So you. Yeah. So I think you, we will probably have this problem when the construction starts because we will do like uh, go under the earth. I forgot the English term for it, and yes. for like two at least two two locations, and I think mm -hmm. it will get worse before it will get better, and I do worry about them maybe using more money for the car compared to the public transport and sidewalks and uh, also the BRT is not just for the bus it's also for sidewalks and also for the bicycle so they're thinking of like you know transit oriented development they're thinking of the whole picture i think that would be good because people are more able to use the bus when it's yeah. better to bike to the bus stop and walk to it so i think yeah. they're thinking about it as a whole concept i think that's important but i do worry that something like this might happen especially if the politician Politic landscape changes, you never know, it's always like, oh, what's happening, you yes, know, yes. it has a big impact on the project. And I know we did a, like a, a transport treaty, there was done a transport treaty, I think in 2019. And I think they're in discussion of uh, like reviewing that. So that would probably come out this fall or something. And maybe it'll be the same, maybe it will change, you never know. Mm -hmm. So. I do worry, I have to admit, but I, I'm hoping for the best because I believe the city will be a better city if we will have a better public transportation and yeah. people can have more options on how to get around the city. I think yeah. that's really important for uh, the capital area. Yeah, it's important when, when there are some improvements, mm -hmm. even if not everything will improve yeah. at the same time, but the improvements makes people uh, think makes people that uh, makes people see that difference, mm -hmm. and they they uh, they can think uh, that things can be uh, change can yeah. change. Uh, people don't uh, cannot uh, even sometimes cannot even imagine the their life without uh, using the cars every mm -hmm. day. Yeah. But yeah. if you make the better transportation systems, people will imagine like this. Yeah. You know, I, I'm fascinated, for example, by but uh, by the growing of uh, children. Yeah, I, I got a little daughter, six years old, and I see that uh, children uh, 
treat as a normal these things which they will see on the world. What will, we will show them. So if, we, if they will see uh, their parents going by bus to work, it will be normal for them to, that we are going by bus yeah. or by bike. You yeah, know, the, the, uh, but, but if they see only their parents uh, going by car, mm -hmm. the normality for them will be car. So yeah. we are making our dreams today, can be our goals in the future, and then for, for, for children which will be born, there will be just the normality. Mm -hmm. And then they can dream higher. Yeah. I think that's Hi. also a problem in Iceland. It's a such a cultural thing. Like some people treat their car like their jacket. They don't wear a jacket; just use their car and <laughs> use their so their back and everything. And many people think of it as like a human right to have their car and be able to get around. Yeah. And I think we need to have that Stand culture shift. Life. Yeah, we need to have that culture shift to. Of course, it's happening somewhere because a lot of Iceland people are going abroad to study, and then they see public transport there at a bit of higher standard here than here in Iceland. So like younger people are more like, oh, maybe bus is okay. But the older generation is more difficult to deal with, of mm -hmm. course. And of course, some of the young people too. But we need to have this cultural shift to be able to reach this 12% mark that the government has. Both cultural shift and tolls and uh, par par parking, higher parking mm -hmm. fees, I think, to be able to reach this goal. It's quite mm -hmm. ambitious. The people are afraid of uh, 50 minutes uh, cities here, mm -hmm. the, the, the effect, because in Poland, many people say that this, that this is a horrible idea, the 15 minute city. So it's about to, to get a simple connection to some places, then you go in, in 15 minutes, then you can walk to, to the school, to the shop, etc. But some people understand it uh, as the uh, closing this yeah, you can only be in this area. That you can yeah. only be in this area. And even if they know that you can walk through this area, they, they are afraid that, that uh, their cars cannot go through this area. Mm -hmm. So they compare this to the uh, closing, uh, close and closing uh, camps. Uh, yeah. uh, and they, they are afraid of this. It's not that. It's, <laughs> yes. Is it the same fears here in, in the right yeah. I do sense some fears. I think just people don't understand it. Like we call it like, uh, making the city more dense, call it maybe more that. And people just think of skyscrapers and like you can have nowhere to park and you can see in the oh. apartment for your neighbor, like just there, there's a window for the neighbor and a lot of people are against it. But I do think it's, I think they need to be educated more about it because that's not exactly what the dam making the city more dense. It's just like yes. we have the, the best divide, the best part of the city. That's pretty dense. It doesn't have to be more than that. And there's no skyscrapers there. It's just yeah. like a lot of houses, but people love to live there, you know. So it doesn't have to be just skyscrapers. It can just be like three to five story high building. And you don't have to have this like big, you know, big thing. Yeah, I think people need to be more educated about it because it is a good thing. And it is, uh, you can spend the money that you have from the taxes in a more reasonable way because you know the school is not so far away yeah. you can just use this school building for way more people you know uh, utilities you can just use it better in a better way and when I talk to people about it then they start to understand it but I need to have a lot of conversation <laughs> for yeah, so we ask the people for them to get to understand it but I'm trying my best <laughs> yeah that's why we recorded we were showing to people what yeah. we are talking about yeah this is also we we have uh, uh, we 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 were considering how how to make shopping here how how to make uh, buy something to to eat and we discovered that uh, we we must walk uh, over two kilometer two kilometers mm. or one one kilometer or two kilometers uh, to to get some uh, shop with the food oh. you know so the, this is this is uh, the car or the car oriented yeah. area. Yeah. So everyone goes by car for, for mm -hmm. the for the shopping. It is it is uh, difficult. So so mm -hmm. did, did you uh, make some some efforts to make this uh, areas more your your neighborhoods more more uh, pedestrian friendly more more walkable? Like uh, we don't have that authority. That's up to the municipalities. But usually, like we try to make it uh, at least 
try to, to communicate that to the municipalities that people need to be able to walk to the stops with a, like great access and also to like cross the road because you have to be able to take a stop on both sides. So we try to influence the municipalities to do that and I think it's just always good thing to have a good access for pedestrians everywhere in every city so yeah and I'm really pro that. <laughs> Because every every uh, users of the of the public transportations is always is also the pedestrian. Yeah, exactly. It's a really important part of the journey. Sometimes every driver is a pedestrian, so it's not yeah. not comfortable if you drive park the car and then you cannot walk yeah. in the other side of the street. Yeah. That often happens. Yeah. We need to change that. I think yeah, we need to change that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Have you ever visit other uh, cities, uh, big cities, uh, to um, view something with transportation on this? Yes, uh, we were uh, just just in June. We went to uh, Copenhagen, uh, Copenhagen, Copenhagen, yeah, okay. and Malmo and Stavanger, uh -huh. and we were like uh, getting some information because we can't look for anyone else in Iceland because we're the only public transport company in Iceland. Mm -hmm. So my department went to those companies to learn how they operate and plan all the routes, especially to co co to prepare for the BRT because it's kind of different, it's way bigger vehicles. It's also, we will try to have like the stuff and the vehicles so people don't have to take a step up. How has that worked for them? Yeah. Did they have to change anything? So we learned a lot from the trip, and we're trying to make not the same mistakes as mm -hmm. those uh, as those cities. And they uh, it was really nice to see how people are doing it in other cities. I think we learned a lot from it. What uh, city uh, was uh, the bigger uh, inspiration? Um, like the biggest inspiration was maybe Malmo. Mom. Like mm -hmm. just because I saw the vehicle and they kind of bought like super like futuristic bus that has the, they call it Malmö Expressen, so it's like looks and it's super green and you can just see like oh okay this is like mm -hmm. and they they did a big marketing thing so people look at it in a more positive way than the normal bus mm -hmm. so people were like oh I'm not taking a bus I'm taking Malmö Express so okay. I think they kind of managed to do the culture shift that we need to do here and so I think that was quite interesting so they put really in, a big emphasis on like the vehicle would be nice and uh, getting through the traffic without you know having good infrastructure for that. I also think Stavanger was really interesting because uh, it's maybe more similar city to Iceland it's quite north and it's similar population of course it's more when you take the outside of the city too so it was really interesting to see how they are doing it as well. And they are also going electrical, uh, like zero emission uh, vehicles. And we plan on that on our future driving to have zero emission vehicles. And just see how that is working and how the drivers are handling the vehicles and how they're planning it and everything. So of course, I think we learn a lot to talk to other uh, people who are planning public transport. And usually people in the public transport industry are really nice. And really want to help each other because it's so it's not so many people who just want to have good public transportation everywhere and so people just want to help so it was really really nice to see how the other cities are doing it do you know the percentage in Stavanger? how many people use public transport oh, they told me but i don't have it in the back of my mind but it was a bit more than here but it was less than in denmark and sweden but they are trying to increase it with uh, it's called Buslein, uh, the bus road or something like that. They're trying to make it more. And the bikes, they had electrical bikes, that has increased a lot. So a lot of people are taking the bikes too. But I can't remember the percentage. And do you know the percentage today? How many people in Reykjavik are using public transport? Like we do like Ferdavenikon, like a travel Surrey or something like that. And it's usually between 4 or 5%. But I think the survey is a bit flawed because it's only in Icelandic and we have a large population with uh, you know foreign foreigners living in Iceland who don't speak Icelandic and they maybe use the bus a little bit more than Icelandic people so I want to I want to think it's a bit more because we need that group to be able to see the whole whole image so when I was 20 it was a 
quite a way back. Mm. I remember there was always a, uh, an extra bus driver, or often there was an extra bus driver, who was counting everyone who came into the bus. Yeah. You don't do that. Yeah, usually, like before, now we have uh, counters in some of the vehicles, like the 20%, and we try to have each vehicle drive each kind of route, so we can kind of get a good distributors um, mm -hmm. to get a good view of the, how the passengers are. But it used to be always counted in October. They used to always oh. count the passenger in October, at least like in the beginning of Strato. Maybe Asafer did it differently in Strato mm -hmm. or But then they used to just hand count everything. But now we have a system to count everything, and so we don't have to do that anymore. And it's probably way cheaper because the counters cost a lot, mm -hmm. but it's really expensive to have a person counting. Yes. It. So it's um what was it eleven thousand people each day who take the bus? Uh, no more like thirty three to thirty five thousand oh, like boardings. But boardings is not exactly the same as passengers because you can take route one and then change to some other route. But it tells a story. Mm. So to get to twelve percent, and we're gonna have the Shinta bread. I didn't tell you about that yesterday, uh, but there are plans to have like a huge road here by the coastline. Uh, and as in your city, to be able to get funding for public transport, you have to say, we're going to spend even more money on the private cars. And then they're going to build this new road here along the coastline. So it's going to be even easier to take your private car, which will mean that fewer people will want to take the, take the bus. Yeah. So it's counter. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't work together. Yeah. And especially because like the BRT will go from Altenshelle to Warer, and mm -hmm. it's the same as the Sitta. Yes. So they're just competing against each other. Yes. So I don't think it will have more. I think it will greatly affect the passenger numbers. Mm -hmm. New road at the cost then. And I didn't yeah. know that, they, that some such a project can be. You see, I, I, if I, I, when I see this, this cost, line, your cost, line, I would um, destroy all the roads for cars and make it a uh, pedestrian area or the coastline, pedestrian yeah. bicycle area, for example, with, with, the, with the tram for, and, and uh, not, not, not cars in the coastline, because the coastline is the uh, way, the, the, the place where the city meets the water. Mm -hmm. yeah, so the, it could be, it should be for the pedestrian to just to walk there, just, the, just to see the city, say, yeah. say hello to the city from the town. But, uh, but if uh, there is uh, a new highway in the coastline, so uh, that's not a good idea. That's no. not a good idea. I, I think I have to agree with you there. At least if you're thinking about making people go more to the bus, I don't think should have is a, a correct way. But people, many people are not agreeing with me on this, but my work is with public transport and everything about that. And I don't think it's, uh, I think it's works against each other. I don't think it works yes. together with, yeah. So, yeah. I don't know what I think about Sinta. <laughs> yeah, okay. And we also, like, we have a, a some group, like a um, uh, public transportation model. And we have run the routes with Sinta and without it. And we get fewer passengers with Sinta. Yeah. <gasps> no. Okay. Is the public? Uh... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, they, I think they did for the, there was some uh, traffic model uh, calculation in the report. I think they had some, we didn't do it, but uh, uh, the Manmet did it. Yeah, because in the, in the uh, EIA, the uh, Unfersmant, yeah. uh, then they decided that this was uh, uh, beneficial for the whole economy, mm. um, but it costs a lot, and to have people bike is like 13 times better for the whole society mm -hmm. uh, than to have them take the cars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's really strange that the EIA actually, so the Environmental Impact Assessment, mm -hmm. actually delivered those results, so I don't really yeah. Uh, trust that report. No. Because I think they decided what what they wanted to come out of it. Yeah. I think the, the process with these assessments are a bit flawed because mm. the person who wants to do it pays some yeah. you know, company to do it. 
of course they want to keep their integrity, but this guy's paying and he wants to do it. Yeah. So I don't know if that's the right way, but that's a whole other <laughs> discussion. So do you think the recovery is moving in the right direction or there are some moves in the right direction and other in the wrong direction? So you like so, this so some of yours, which is uh, biggest, uh, you stand in the same position or it's uh, getting better or it will get worse? Well, I think the city, they want to have more public transportation. The Sundhavn is the government and there's a, diff a different mi majority in the city and the country. And the uh, Minister of Transport, he is not in the same majority as the Reykjavik, I think. Yeah. So it's Who's going to build the, this highway in the coastline? Yeah, is it going to be the government? Yeah. Or like a, maybe like a combination of it? So you should it. protest. You should protest. It. Yeah, but a lot of people also want it because I don't. I think it's difficult for people to see the future. Like they think everything is just going to stay the same. And now, for many many people, the bus doesn't yeah. fit them. And I think it's difficult for people to shift the paradigm and think, oh, maybe in the future it will, because it's just so far. Like right? the visualizations. Yeah. You should make how it should look like with the highway, the coastline with the highway, mm -hmm. horrible view on with the asphalt <laughs> and the uh, cars, and then compare it with the uh, visualization of the uh, boulevard yeah. with bicycles, pedestrians, trees. people who yeah, trees, yeah. Uh, drums, and the people will see. Yeah. If people don't see, they will not imagine. Yeah. They don't know where it will be, what is, will happen. Uh, so the visualization with some some points which exist today, you know, that people should see. Yeah, this is this area, this is this building, and this could look look like this mm -hmm. or like this. And then you have some uh, some narration, so some uh, some uh, some something that can change the imagination. Yeah. Or, it would be great if someone would do something like that to yeah. us against. Someone should should do it. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> okay, like. It's just it's just it's highly political. Yeah, it's really political. This uh, uh, thing. Yeah, and I think they only manage to agree on the what you should call the city line, Borgalina. Yeah. The BRT. In BRT. In what yeah. does it stand for? Bus rapid transit. Yeah. But that confuses people because then they think the bus will go super fast. <laughs> but it's not like that. Yeah. The, the speed will not be super fast. It's going to be like, yeah. I don't know, 25 to 28 kilometers per hour or something. But they will not be stuck in traffic. Yeah. But this Sundabraut, uh, this highway, the coast, coastline highway, they, they, they were only able to get the government to agree to uh, co-fund the city line or the Borgalina. Mm -hmm if the city agreed to allow for the planning of the mm. highway. Yeah. It's a really political thing that we have not a lot of control yeah. over. And it's so strange, your goal is to... Like a ma mafia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so your goal is to... Uh, your goal should be to reduce traffic. Mm -hmm. uh, and even if the city reaches their goals of 58% of uh, all uh, routes, uh, further, mm -hmm. or <coughs> to be uh, with a, with a private car, even if they reach that goal, it will still mean just as much traffic as mm -hmm. we have already, because there are so many more people coming into the city. Yeah. yeah. So that will not even make things better. No. Even if if all these goals mm -hmm. are reached. Especially, and it's like the same, almost like the bridge, like Sunda, the bridge will be here, and then the. BRT corridor would be a little bit more, yeah. so it's like almost the same route, yeah. and because it's BRT and we want to be ha have pedestrian friendly, so the uh, top speed here will be not so great, mm. maybe 50 at most, there will be maybe 80, 70, mm. you know, it's going to be a tough competition, mm. especially if we have the same culture in Iceland as we do today. Yeah, so instead of making like a policy and a decision, this is the way we're going to go, we're going to reduce traffic. They just say, we're going to do both, so everyone is happy. Mm -hmm. Everyone can choose if they take the car or mm -hmm. the bus. And of course people are going to choose the car because it's more convenient. Mm -hmm. And I think people are willing to pay a lot more to use the car. 
like than other nation shop. Mm -hmm. So they like it, it, it's a human right for some people mm -hmm. to have a car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, for some people in, in Poland also, this is a, like human right. Yeah. yeah, and I do think, like, of course, some politicians talk talk about they want to, like, reduce uh, the carbon print and stuff like that. But I think they're more focused on just having cars that are zero emission. But they forget to talk about that mm -hmm. it ha creates a lot of traffic too. Like, you need to shift how people travel. That's the big issue, not just making everything electrical. You have to do everything, making everything electrical and trying to shift the travel mode of the people and travel in a various modes. Of course, sometimes you need the car. It's not a bad thing, but you don't have to use it all the time. You can just try to use it yes. in a different way and try to you know, think more about maybe the environment and the, the city environment you're living in. They also forget that, I can't remember the percentage, it was somewhere around 25% of the CO2 emission uh, from traffic comes from the traffic in infrastructure itself because mm -hmm. th that of course emits a lot yeah to build a single bike lane that's gonna last forever and ever and ever mm -hmm. doesn't do it yes. uh, can I ask one more question yeah of course uh, the uh, there's sort of a meme going on mm -hmm. and even in my circles and uh, even with within the circle of people who are against car traffic, that uh, the bus is not a realistic option now. Mm -hmm. uh, I completely disagree with that. Uh, I do use the bus when I cannot take the bike. Uh, I live in the outskirts of the city. Uh, the bus is almost always on time, especially after you changed. You, you mentioned the house uh, in Reykjavik area. Yeah. So the bus line that I took came from that area. Fifteen or the fifth. Yeah, fifth. Yeah. yeah, and it in the afternoons it was always stuck mm -hmm. in car traffic. Yeah, yeah. So it was so annoying. It was maybe twenty five minutes late to the bus stops because it was stuck with other cars that were yeah. just delaying the bus. But you changed that, mm -hmm. so I just can't remember the last time the bus was late. Yeah. It used to just be stuck between uh, University of Reykjavik and uh, BSC. Yeah. So we caught it and made a stop at BSI yeah. and had a just separate route that drove just a short distance. Yes. So to me, taking the bus is completely realistic and works. Of course, if I want to go from one suburb to another suburb, it's going to take two hours. Yeah. What do you expect? But people just always compare it to the car. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you take the car, it will take 20 minutes maximum, mm -hmm. but if I take the bus, it will take two hours. So, of mm -hmm. course, that is difficult. So, how do you like answer this meme, which is so annoying that it's not a realistic option? And then they're saying to the 33,000 people that currently take the bus mm -hmm. in Iceland mm -hmm. that every day that uh, they, they're not doing something that is realistic. I mean, how do you answer this? Uh, I need help. Yeah, I need help too. <laughs> but also when people are just car comparing the car compared to the bus, they just think about, oh, I drive 10 kilometers, it's just like X amount of kilometers for gasoline. They don't mm -hmm. don't take into account how much it costs to have a car. Yes, yeah. and, it's, and it's really difficult to make them think Insurance, about it. And when they take the time, they only think about when you get into the car and yeah. out of the car, they don't think about walking to the car and walking from the car to the destination. I so So it's really skewed how much time difference there is. And of course there is time difference. Yeah. And it's really difficult to make people, but I think maybe a good point was just how, make, trying to make people realize how expensive it is to have a car. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so expensive and people don't realize it because they just bought it two years ago and yeah. don't want to think about the two or three million they spent on the car. Yeah. But each year, each month, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. And if you just, when I talk to them now, it costs about, one million is probably more now to have a car each year. They're like, whoa, I, like people hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, it's best to have what I think it's the most important thing and research show it's to have more frequent trips. But of course, that's the most expensive thing to do. I think if we would have more frequent trip with the BRT, I think that would help because people don't like to wait. So I'm really hoping that will help people. But I don't know how to convince people. I also think there has to be a culture shift because you know it's just implemented in Iceland people that they have to have the car. It's human right, and, and people, some people 
live down bus like do you take the bus some people think it's only people who have lost their driver's license or poor or something like that mm -hmm. but it's not that it's all kind of people take the bus so i think that needs to be just more education and more discussion about it and a lot of people don't realize that Rod one for example have, goes every 10 minutes on uh, like for the rush hour and every 15 minutes to the day a lot of people just don't know this fact because when they were growing up, it wasn't maybe every half an hour or something. Yeah. And there's a huge difference, 30 minutes or 10 minutes. It's just completely changes the view how accessible you think the bus is. So I think there needs to be education on that one. And people don't know them. They, they just think, oh, it's too complicated. I don't want to put myself into it. There's like a lot of angles you can get to it, but I don't have a perfect answer for this. <laughs> but what is the uh, reason for you and for you not to drive car here or like limited? Driving well, car. I, I what do what drive a car. I have to. I like. Yes. I live in Hamburger, mm -hmm. but I live close to Road One, so I use it when I can. But like my work is in Hestals, that's kind of in the outskirts of the city, and that's quite far. It will take me more than one hour to take the bus when I'm maybe seventeen minutes to drive. So uh, what I do is try to work some days from home, and some time commute, and sometimes I drive. It's a bit far for me to, to uh, bike in the winter, but summers maybe I have to try to bike. But do you are asking why we don't want to take no, the Because car. we are looking for the reasons uh, how to, you know, tell oh. people, but maybe yeah. you, your own reasons are yeah. good to use them. Yeah. The, company, the, the office of the Stratio company, which is uh, about uh, bus transportation, is located in the outskirts, in, yeah. in the place where people go mostly by cars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we used to be in the okay. office. We used to be located okay, in the okay. office. Okay. And then we, we used to take the yeah. bus. But then uh, Lake York City changed how we were housing and we had to house in where the... Of course, because the buses are stored there, There's a, they take a lot of room. So it's not like way out of the city, but it is kind of out of, city, out of like the main city. And it's close to where I live. Yeah. So uh, because all the buses are uh, like stored there during the night, and so they moved the office to there, that place. But I do agree, there's a bit of, a, you know, <laughs> sound and, <laughs> and then the uh, film's not talking together, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's a bit weird. I liked it, like the location better in real because then I could bike or take the bus more to the yeah. yeah. But I do try to work from home some days. But why I don't want to take the, 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 yeah. the, the car, I do have to take it sometimes because I'm a grown woman and one hour each way is too much for me, uh, but I want to like uh, have less traffic and I think about environmental reasons and also the cost and I try want to have a better environment for the future. Why is it important for you to have better environment for the future? Like the global warming and mm -hmm. we all have a lot of problems and if I don't do it, why should I tell other people to do it? Mm -hmm. But of course I can do better, you can always do better. That's maybe the main reason that I try to not always take the bus and only have one car. Mm -hmm. Outdoor and how is it uh, for you? What is the reason? Yeah, of course the environment, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I just I just love sitting in the bus. Uh, nobody speaks to me. I can just listen to music or a story or mm -hmm. play a stupid game on my phone. It's the it's most days it's the only time i have for myself mm -hmm. uh, so it's like being in a bus full of people but it's my most private moment okay being there. Mm -hmm. uh, and i really like taking the bike because uh, of the fresh air and the exercise mm -hmm. uh, but it's also very convenient when i have to uh, have meetings around like the city mm -hmm. i have one meeting here and one meeting there uh, then it's much quicker than to have the car, just to take the bike. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing uh, negative about the bike for running errands is, uh, of course, the weather in Iceland, <laughs> but also uh, it's so difficult to find a good parking space mm -hmm. for the bike. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to park the, park the car. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it just takes forever to take the car. Uh, the route I have to drive uh, and I get very moody and frustrated if I have to take the car but I feel refreshed after taking the bike. Okay, 
because I remember, but maybe I misunderstood something. Like uh, two years ago, I've met you. I mean, you spoke on webinar. Oh, yeah, 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 I mentioned yeah. this yesterday, and I remember that you said uh, something like this about global warming. That for Icelandic people, it's much more. Uh, it's uh, uh, getting faster than for other European or you know other countries in the world because uh, of the. Um, I forgot the name. Um, because of the. Uh, um, Ludowiec? Yes, uh, ice is, you know, melting, ice so it's, it's more dangerous for the whole island for you, like, like you know, for the future thinking, something like this. Yes. It's so more... maybe it's a good to tell people that, look, it's like close future for us. Yeah, like. it's more, it's more obvious because, I mean, if we, if we just go to the street over here, uh, we can see a glacier uh, and this glacier will have disappeared in 2050. And this is a glacier that most people in the capital area connect with uh, because we see it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and in my lifetime, in your lifetime, it will be gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's pretty scary. And we, we can like see a symbol of eternity, like glaciers are yes. a symbol of eternity and they're disappearing. So it's a, it's a very strong, like a clock counting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you see uh, less, you see that every year the glacier is getting smaller. Uh, yeah, so it's it's a little bit more obvious for us. But also uh, the Arctic, the <coughs> sub-Arctic, are warming much faster than the rest of the world. Uh, but there is like a strange point uh, in the southwest of Iceland, in the ocean. And because of the melting uh, Greenland ice cap, uh, so much fresh water, cold fresh water, goes there. Uh, and it sort of disrupts some currents uh, and the prediction is that it may actually become colder here. We don't don't know what's going to happen, okay. but it may become colder here. Then the glacier is going to be fine <laughs> because it's in the okay. side. Okay, so it's uh, not uh, good to be so But the weather here is going to be worse than it is now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Like maybe it's just my perspective, like, but I feel like in recent years that the winter has been more crazy, you know, yes. more extremes. Yeah. I feel like in my lifetime it's been more extremes, but the last, this is my feeling. I, w I would agree. The last last winters in particular were yeah. horrible. Yeah. Uh, but many winters. And when I was a child, I feel like uh, it was more rain and less of snow, but yeah. less of course like fluctuation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The, 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 the last part of the interview was, was uh, just. Uh, uh, we said that the things that was not said before, yeah, the very important things, yeah. and we realized that many things that surround us are just uh, greenwashing, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's uh, we must that, that our mission as, as the people who has the uh, knowledge is to to tell people that uh, they should see the things that, that, that they are really are. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, for example, in the interview with the, in the city hall, I can ask the one question, what are the plans for the future for the coast of this uh, coast of city? I'm gonna ask, uh, what's the plans? Uh, did, did we can expect the, 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 the great boulevard with the trees and then bicycle? And we will see how they react, you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>